My friends, Jim Messina here once again for VintageDrumsTalk.com, and I'm telling you, it's getting exciting because showtime is almost here. That's right, the Chicago show is coming up very soon, so I'm just throwing a little something out here to get everybody's juices flowing, and of course, we've got another segment here from Tim Northup of the Northup Drum Museum. Okay, we're going to be doing a lot of uh, broadcasts from the museum. Tim has a lot to show us. Okay, so hang in there. Check out this little video I've got. It's real interesting. Oh, yeah. Weird Al Yankovic's drummer. <laughs> Bob Schwartz is a crack. He cracks me up. I'm telling you. So, folks, hang in there. Jim Messina, VintageDrumStalk.com. Hey guys, if you're hip to Weird Al Yankovic, guess who I'm standing with right here? John Schwartz himself. This is the drummer for Weird Al Yankovic. Hello, it's John. None of you know who is John. It's all How true. How you doing? Nice to meet this you, This is Jim. our first time meeting, and it's a it pleasure is. to meet you, sir. Pleasure to meet you, Jim. You guys don't know this, but besides being Weird Al Yankovic's drummer for how many years now? 31 and a half. It's a long time, and it's been a weird time, hasn't it? It's been too long. No, it's great. It's great. It's been an interesting trip. Now, I'd like you to tell us just what, what we're doing here behind these Blay, is it Blaymeyer? Blaymeyer. Blaymeyer, drums. Uh, Alan Blaymeyer, in the 60s, made this set of uh, fiberglass toms. I see. Seven of them, not eight, as is common. It's not uh, an octoplus, but there's uh, seven of them. 6, 8, 10, 12, 13, 14, 16. Uh, in 1968, he made those for him. Those are the toms that basically spawned the Octoplus kit. I see. And they are heard on hit after hit after hit after hit. Now, Blaymeyer continued making drums in the 60s and 70s uh, and the 80s, even into the 90s a little bit. A lot of studio guys in LA used them. My introduction to them was a, a recent article about someone who had restored a set of, he found them at a garage sale and knew what they were and just did a yep. beautiful job, especially with this very recognizable green color. Right. Uh, it was a beautiful restoration. So is this your set? Or? This this is my set. These are brand new and they are made exactly like Alan Blaymeyer made his. Okay. The guy that did these, Jerry Jenkins and Dave Martin, uh, well, Jerry knew Alan Blaymeyer before he passed away a few okay. years ago, and he knows what the formula, he knows what he did. He, he went to PPG and got the original resin. He knows what, he, everything's original, same specs, same thickness, same color. This is a very usual, un, this, this finish, it's so recognizable now to Blaymeyer drums. Ever it's since a, I read a, that article. It's a little rough, it's a little bit raw, Yeah. but that's, that's what they were. Uh, and they were compared against, I mean, time and time again, against original Blaymeyer shells. So, I mean, they are, they are Blaymeyer shells. But even the heads. Well, now these are, it's interesting, these heads are kind of a, uh, uh, they're a little bit brown. Yes. But they, they seem to take on the color they of the They do. Brown. I was going to call them pea green <laughs> or something, but they're now, if not, If you took this head off and looked at it, it would be like brown. Ah. It's really weird. It's, Everything's going green. Isn't that fantastic? Jeez. Now, look. Most of you know John Schwartz as the drummer for Weird Al Yankovic, but he also does some collecting himself. And I wanted him to show you this set. Why don't you describe this set to our this, folks here? This is uh, a Ludwig and Ludwig 1944 Victory outfit. Uh, this was, uh, list price on this was $195 back in the day. Uh, in the war effort, companies, most companies were required to use less than 10% metal in their products. Hence, the wooden lugs, they have metal inserts. Hence, the big giant hoops, which added weight, which gave them a little more leeway on the metal that they did use. Uh, 
it's a, it's a particularly beautiful kit. It's not quite as white as you see it in this picture, but it's not really yellowed at all. I mean, it's it's so clean for what it was. These were kept in a closet or something. I don't know. How long have you had these, John? I actually just got these uh, about a year ago. Really? These had belonged to, uh, uh, oh man, <laughs> it was Rose Maddox, uh, her, her band. Okay. I can't think of the guy's name. Don, okay. Don Maddox. Okay. And uh, up in uh, Medford, Oregon. Did they come with the floor, Tom? Yep. Stand? Yep. These yep. are hard to find. That's hard what to find. It's just a simple and design, too, but that's what gets also, me the, the, the ingenuity. Have, uh, also have the ad, and it's, it's there in it the is. ad. I mean, it is. There's the stand right there. It's correct. Yeah, and it's very simple. It's a simple idea, but I still, it's so simple right before your eyes. Those guys thought of those ideas back then out of necessity, and yeah. I, they're really to be commended. We're going to be looking a little bit later at uh, a wooden bass drum pedal, and I just presented Dave Brown, the famous English collector, with a reproduction stand that I made for him. So this all ties together. Now, we'd like to hear a little bit of what these Blameyer drums sound like. Let's have a little roll down. All right. Here we go. Very nice. Very nice. Ha <laughs> ha. John Schwartz for Blameyer. Don't look for Weird Al Yankovic. He'll be everywhere. John, it's been a pleasure. pleasure Thank, you. Thank you so much, sir. Hi, Jim. Welcome back to the Northrop Drums Museum. I'm Tim Northrop, your host. Today, we're going to talk about painted drum heads, and then we're going to go into the fun room back here after that that has all the traps, sound effects, whistles, all the gadgets. But we're going to lead up to that by talking about why they needed those. So here's a nice example of a wall working on a J, original white ring pearl with a matching snare drum, with a trap table with temple blocks, and a drummer would have filled this table with all the traps that we're going to talk about back there for silent films or vaudeville, um, any kind of theater production like that. And, uh, and then they dress it up with a beautiful hand-painted head. We have the spiderweb girl here from Leedy. We have the Leedy silhouette. This is one of my favorites. This one is a very unusual silhouette. Uh, I have the other one too that's kind of hidden back there behind this really great snare drum, but there's another version of the silhouette that's beautiful with the moon. Um, just back up a little bit, a little bit earlier than that, this is really cool. We have a Leedy overhang pedal. So that's something you're not going to see in, in many collections. And here in the North of Drums Museum, we, we actually have two of those, but you can come and you can play this very old kit with original early Wahlberg and Ajay uh, Chinatown holders, real early Leedy snare, China symbol. And uh, this poster I love because uh, Vic Firth put this out. It's called A Century of Drumming Evolution uh, with, that he did with Dan, Daniel Blatt. And this is 1865 to 1965. And if you look at this poster, it's wonderful because you see a lot of the same things in this poster that are right here in this museum that you can come and actually touch, play, you know, look at, get up close to. Um, as some of the wonderful things in this showcase right here, uh, we have a Gene Krupa trophy from the 1941 Swing Contest. That's the original trophy that was given to the second place winner. Photo of Gene with Joe Rayner, who was actually the uh, second place winner. Louis Belson won that contest, and we have all the documentation, all the paperwork from Slingerland in this binder. And then, if you pan down this case, we have a Slingerland Black Beauty number 16, Ludwig Black Beauty. We have Mod, this is a 100th anniversary Ludwig Black Beauty, uh, John Aldridge Black Beauty for Ludwig, and then we have other, uh, there's a Leedy Black Beauty here, and other unusual snare drums in this case and then we go back to a beautiful another Ludwig Millstream uh, drum set complete with trap table temple blocks Chinatown hi-hat um, here's a, a one of the owner before me framed the uh, leady head because it was uh, damaged on the drum so he had it taken off the flesh hoop and actually framed it. And this is the Venetian Boatman which is a very very rare head there's only a few of those out there that we know of so, um, but back to some of this stuff here. We've got some early snares, and we've got, um, I'm gonna go through a progression here. Here's a, Lud a Ludwig snowshoe pedal. It's a very 
very first hi-hat, basically, or offbeat. And then after that came the low boy, and Slingerland had their version of the low boy, which was the Slingerland Duncan pedal, which is a very cool thing. We have a couple of these here in the museum that you could play, look at, you know, whatever. Uh, so I guess at this point, here we go. We're going into the fun room. We're going into all the, where all the bells and whistles are, so follow me. Um, we're going to talk about some trap kits in here first. So this kit right here is one of my favorites. Uh, this is a Leedy from 1936, and the, how we know that is I have a photograph of the gentleman the day he got it, standing behind this kit. And everything, I have the invoice for it, and everything that he bought with this kit is here, and then I've added a few Chinese Toms. But all the stuff that he bought with it originally is here, and his family even wrote a book about this set, uh, telling where he played it. And he actually opened this kit, opened for Artie Shaw playing this drum kit in the 1940s. So that was like opening for Elvis Presley or the Beatles. So that was like a really big deal. So that's one of the, the rarities here at the North of Drums Museum. Um, we have beautiful Ludwig painted heads here, a Lee uh, head. Here's a nice little Wahlberg and Auge. Um, Earl, all the early accoutrements for a trap table. We've got a squawker, a ratchet, uh, early pedal, early Chinese tom holders, a China symbol. And then we're going to get to the fun stuff. We're going to go to the trap case. So this is all the bells and whistles and all the fun stuff to make all the sound effects for vaudeville silent films. We've got slide whistles, cowbells, train whistles, all kinds of stuff. Um, sand blocks, ratchets. This ratchet is my favorite. Ratchet. It's just really loud. We've got train whistles, all kinds of cowbells, and one of my favorite things we have here at the museum is a whole selection of hand cymbals and cymbals that mount on bass drums. And this is my forte. I'm going to be doing a whole segment on this, but we have we have all kinds of Bach at a box, Gladstone cymbals. Um, that Chick Webb used, that same type. And then we've got all kinds of symbols that actually mount on a bass drum. And some of you have seen some of the demonstrations I've done on that. And then, I know Jim, this is one of your favorite items that the museum owns. It's a very rare duplex afterbeat. And I think right now we know of maybe there's only around three of these known in the world. And one of them lives here, very happily, in this <laughs> museum. So. Uh, we've got that, low boys, early pedals, um, this is a great little trap kit here with a bird's eye maple wood block, uh, cowbell set, Chinese toms, and this is, this is a typical set that you would have in the 1920s and 30s. This would have been your setup. Two cymbals, two Chinese toms, a cowbell rig, wood block, a, a little snare, and a, and a hi-hat probably. Uh, not to mention, in the case, all of the Ludwig and Slingerland and early pedals I have here. So, that's basically a quick tour of the North of Drums Museum. This is just a, a little quick tour of what you ex can expect to see when you visit here. So, please come visit. Back to you, Jim. Thanks. Have a great day.